Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise be Jesus, Mary and Joseph. I greet all of you with joy in the Lord as we rejoice in the love of Christ. As we feel God's presence, let us ask the Holy Spirit to prepare our hearts to be receptive to the word that will soothe us and also convict us. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, dear Lord, invest with me your power as I prepare to proclaim the marvel of your message, not just with my lips, but with my whole heart and soul. We beseech you, our loving mother, intercede and pray for us. Your most holy soul was pierced by seven swords of sorrow in the hour of our Lord's bitter passion. Heavenly Father, we ask that your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, pour down his precious blood upon each one of us to guide us, protect us, purify us, sanctify us, and save us. Thank you, Jesus, for your presence. We surrender this session entirely to you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for anointing us and covering us with the precious blood of Jesus. Take my hand and my heart, anoint my head and my mouth, and let there be no gap between your will and my words. Remove any form of destruction that the enemy has set before us to steal your word from our hearts. I praise and thank you, Abba Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. The topic chosen today is the seven sorrows of Mary, as this is the month of seven sorrows of Mary. So let us enter into the mind and heart of Mama Mary, as we will reflect on the seven major sorrows of Mary from the birth of her son, Jesus Christ till his crucifixion on the cross. It's very important that when we reach each of the seven sorrows, we take a moment to meditate on the magnitude of Mary's sufferings and the strength of our mother's love. Just as we mothers have a heart constantly longing for our children to be close to them in every possible way, Mary's heart was one with the heart of a divine son, Lord Jesus Christ. Let us enter now to know about Mary. Mama Mary was a simple, ordinary person. We throw it to a man named Joseph who lived in Nazareth. She had her dreams for a family and a desire for a peaceful life amidst every pain. But when Angel Gabriel encountered, she was deeply troubled. A simple heart was mixed with uneasy feelings of concern and worry as to how could a conception of this sort take place and what made heaven grant her this choice of being the mother of the Son of God. Yet, our Blessed Virgin Mary said the big yes the fiat moment. She consented and became willing to allow God's script to work in her life. She became the woman of the mystery of God's salvation, the perfect executor of heaven's plans for humanity, the refuge of all in uncertain times. The devotion to our Sorrowful Mother originated in the 13th century. It recalls the sorrows the Virgin Mother of God endured in compassion for the suffering and death of her divine son. Mother Mary is referred to as Our Lady of the Seven Sorrows, Our Lady of Piety, Our Lady of the Seven Dolors, and the Mother of Sorrows. Our Lady of Sorrows is related to the triumph of the exaltation of the Holy Cross. The Feast of Our Lady of Sorrows is liturgically celebrated every year on the 15th of September. 
as Christ was the man of sorrows in Isaiah 53, 3, through whom it pleased God to have reconciled all things to him and for him, everything in heaven and on earth, when he made peace by his death on the cross. Colossians 1, 20. So to Mary, she is the woman of sorrows, whom God associated with his son as mother and a participant in passion of Christ Jesus. Saint Bernardine of Siena stated, this sorrow of Mary was so great that if it had been equally divided among all men, they would have died immediately. No martyrdom has ever equaled Mary's sorrow. Saint Bernard of Clairwick's quotes, Mary was a mother by bitter sorrow of heart, in dangers, in doubts, in difficulties. Think of Mama Mary. Call upon Mama Mary. With her to guide you, you can never, never go astray. Saint Albert the Great stated, as we are under great obligations to Jesus for his passion, endured for our love, so also are we under great obligations to Mary for the martyrdom which she voluntarily suffered for our salvation in the death of her son. Saint Basil quotes, as the sun surpasses all the stars in luster, so the sorrows of Mary surpasses all the tortures of the martyrs. Saint Bridget of Sweden. She devoted her entire life following the footsteps of Jesus Christ by truly caring for people in need. In the 14th century, Mary appeared to her and revealed the seven sorrows of Mary's rosary devotion. There is no sinner in the world, however much at enmity with God, who cannot recover God's grace by recourse to Mama Mary and by asking her assistance. Pope Pius VII was taken prisoner and transported to France. He remained there until 1814, when after the French were defeated, he was permitted to return to Rome. During his exile, he sought comfort in his tribulations by meditating upon the seven sorrows of our Blessed Mother and asking for her intercession that he could return to Rome to govern the church. In honor of Our Lady, the Pope made this feast to be a major feast in the universal calendar of the church. In the 80s, Blessed Virgin Mary, she appeared to three schoolgirls in Kibeho, Rwanda, and showed them a vision of rivers of blood. One of the visionaries, Mary Claire Mukangango, was slaughtered in the Rwandan genocide in 1994, where millions were killed. During Mary's apparitions to Mary Claire, she assigned her with the mission to reintroduce the special rosary of seven sorrows to the world. Mary Claire taught it to thousands of people in 1994 before she was killed in the genocide. The seven sorrows or dolors are particular events in the life of Mary that caused excessive sorrow in her immaculate heart. Sorrows in which she was specially united to Jesus. Our Blessed Mother's entire life was a martyrdom for intense sufferings of a divine son. Lamentations 1.12 Is it nothing to you, all you who pass by? Look and see if there is any sorrow like my sorrow. The seven sorrows of Our Lady which are biblical and redemptive, are our seven sorrows in these times. If you are suffering or wounded, go to Mama Mary, for she understands what is it to suffer for the sin of others. O Mother of Sorrows, most afflicted of all mothers, have mercy. 
she reminds us always about the sorrows of your son, Jesus. Let us reflect on our seven sorrows. The prophecy of Simeon, the first word of sorrow. Simeon announces the suffering destiny of Jesus. Luke 2, verse 22 to 35. 40 days after birth of Jesus, when the time came for the purification rites as required by the law of Moses, Joseph and Mary take Jesus to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. This was a very happy day for Mary, which like all mothers, the baptism of our child is so beautiful. So we are so excited. And likewise, Mary was so happy and she enters this church. And as she enters, the happy day for Mary takes a turn for the sorrowful. When Simeon, the devout man filled with the Holy Spirit, recognizes Jesus as the promised Savior and looking up to heaven gives thanks to God saying, Sovereign Lord, now your servant may depart this life in peace. For as you have promised, my eyes have seen the salvation which you prepared in the sight of all the people. Simeon was one of the first to experience the peace of Christ. He blesses the family, looks at Mary and says, Behold, this child is set for the fall and rising of many in Israel and for a sign that is spoken against. And a sword will pierce through your own soul also that thoughts out of many hearts will be revealed. Mary's heart remained heavy and troubled. She felt great anguish. As often as she wrapped him in his swaddling clothes, she saw his hands and feet. Her soul would be absorbed in fresh grief because she knew her beloved son, the innocent of innocence, would be crucified for the salvation of mankind. From that moment on, Every time she would lift her baby Jesus' infant hands, she would see them fall across the shadow of nails and his suffering became her own. The second sword of sorrow, the flight into Egypt. Matthew 2, 13 to 15, and also you will see it in Luke 2, 43 to 45. The angel warned Joseph in a dream to flee for Egypt immediately with Mary and Jesus because Herod would soon order the massacre of all boys under the age of two in Bethlehem to make sure that this baby Jesus was killed. Mary's heart broke and her mind was greatly troubled. She hardly had any time to decide what to take and what to leave behind. She just wrapped her child in her arms and rushed out Though her heart remained constantly thinking about how she's going to travel, how she's going to reach her destination, because she knew that where she is going, there is no friendly faces to greet them. Mary and Joseph are so tired, sleepy and hungry in this long travel, but her only thought was the safety and comfort of her baby child, Jesus. The road they traveled was rough, unknown, dangerous, but her heart was deeply troubled at the sight of her infant son's discomfort because it could have been the dark nights. It could have been very cold. Uh, it could have been some insect bites or some, anything could have happened on the journey. She suffered greatly because he was cold and shivering. And as they were very simple, poor people, it's evident that they must have had to work really hard to have some basic necessity of life. So this hardship of travel, the long journey, life of a refuge, but it was nothing compared to the thought of how this demonic Herod was thinking about killing her child, Jesus. And this fulfills the prophet Hosea's prediction in scripture, out of Egypt, I call my son, Hosea 11.1. The third sorrow of sword of sorrow, the loss of Jesus in the temple. Mary and Jesus went to the temple and 
when on their way in the caravan, they must have thought Mary must have thought Jesus is with Joseph. Joseph must have thought Jesus is with Mary. And for a day they travel. And suddenly Mary discovers, both of them discover that Jesus is not with them. Mary might have thought that Jesus left her because of some negligence on her part. Finally, they find Jesus engaged in a spirited discussion with the learned teachers in the temple. Mary holds him and says, don't you know that your father and I were so worried about you? Jesus seems surprised that Mary and Joseph would be worried about his whereabouts. Jesus replies with words that pierces her heart directly. How is it that you sought me? Did you not know I must be about my father's business? So again, the finding of child Jesus in the temple becomes the loss of Jesus for Mama Mary. The Lord absented himself from Mary in order that by seeking him in sorrow and tears, she will find him with joy and abundant fruits for her soul. Mary lost Jesus only in the darkness of the soul. And she teaches us that when we lose sight of God, we must not wait for God to come back. We need to go and search and find the Lord Jesus. We need to have reconciliation with our Lord. The fourth word of sorrow. Mary meets Jesus on the way to Calvary. In Luke 23, 26 to 31. Let us visualize the horrible scene unfolding before Mary's eyes as Jesus is heading straight to his death. Mary goes with St. John to see her divine son as he carried his cross by the footsteps of her son. She knew where he had passed because there was all blood all around the footpath as he was walking along. So she knew that Jesus has crossed this path because the ground was marked with blood. Jesus, weakened by the numerous hard blows given by the soldiers' clubs, kicked, beaten, and scourged so brutally that his entire body is covered with wounds from head to toe. And then he's made to carry this heavy cross all alone. The cross on which Jesus himself is to be crucified as a criminal. And imagine the soldiers hurrying and pushing him. Jesus has no strength. He falls exhausted, unable to raise himself up. At the same time, his head crowned with thorns. The heavy weight of the cross on his shoulders drooping in agony. He falls again. And as he falls, he sees his mother's eyes. So full of tender love and compassion. What a sight to behold. The most sorrowful mother meets the most sorrowful son. Mary's eyes fixed on Jesus and Jesus' eyes dulled and blinded with blood fixed on Mary's. Their hearts share the same load, but they know nothing can be done except to believe and trust in God. Put everything in the hands of God and dedicate all your sufferings to him. Jesus cast a look of compassion and sorrow upon his mother, staggers and falls for the second time on his hands and on his knees. The fifth sorrow, Mary stands at the foot of the cross. Mary springs from the doorway into the midst of the group that are there's a big group over there and she just pushes her way through and through to reach to Jesus. Imagine the pain in her heart. People are insulting him, abusing him. And she just throws herself on her knees besides Jesus. Jesus suffers death in the body. Mary suffers death in her heart. The Blessed Virgin Mary, she then continues to climb the Mount of Calvary following behind Jesus painfully and sorrowfully, suffering silently. She could see Jesus staggering and falling with the cross several times and witness her son being beaten by soldiers who pulled his hair to force him to stand up. Despite his innocence, when Jesus reaches the top of Calvary, 
he's ordered to confess in front of the crowd and they mock him, they laugh at him. Jesus is reduced to such a state of pitiful disfigurement as to no longer he could be recognized as a human being. Mary, so holy, yet deeply she feels her son's pain and humiliation. Particularly when his tormentors forced him to strip off what was left of his clothing. What a sight to behold. The Blessed Virgin Mary, she felt sick at heart. Seeing these tyrants crucifying her son naked, shaming him terribly just to amuse the crowd. They sang merrily as they approached him with hammers and nails. They sat on him heavily so he could not move when they spiked him on the wood. As they hammered the nails through his hands and feet, Mary feels each blow in her heart. The nails pierces her flesh as they tear into her son's body. She felt her life fading away. As the soldiers lifted the cross to drop it into the hole they had dug, they deliberately jerked it, causing the force of his full body weight to tear through the flesh and expose his bone. At the same time, our Blessed Virgin Mary, she feels crucial pain in her body as the son Jesus is stretched out on the cross. Jesus endures three excruciating hours hanging on the cross and Mary is so powerless to help Jesus. There is no way to wave off this brutal expiation for the sins of humanity. If only we knew the blood of Jesus, how he shed for us and what is the value of every drop of blood, we would sin no more. Mary stands at the foot of Christ's cross along with his beloved disciple John, one or two other holy women and Mary Magdalene. And when Jesus looks down at Mary from the cross and she looks up at him, tears streams from her eyes like blood from veins. The physical pain of Jesus is nothing compared to the agonizing heartache, just seeing his mother below standing there suffering like him. His suffering became her suffering. Jesus Christ and Mama Mary redeem the world with one heart. During these bitter hours of Jesus' crucifixion, Mary also had to suffer because she was constantly hearing these soldiers mocking at Jesus, taunting him to come down from the cross if he really was the son of God. Matthew 27, 40. Some said Jesus was a thief. Some said he was an imposter. Others said no one deserved death more than he did. And every word was a sword of sorrow, crisscrossing Mama Mary's heart. Finally, the head of Jesus drops and his beard rests on his chest. Mama Mary's hands become numb. The thought of Jesus' death kills her instantly. Darkness appears before her eyes. Her face turns white as a corpse. Her ears can't hear. She just can't speak a word. Her feet gives way. She just sinks to the ground. A piercing of two hearts with one sword. The crucifiers did not even permit Mama Mary to moisten the lips of her dying son with a drop of water. Nor allow her to console her child in any manner. Just imagine how much she suffered. Yet how much of strength and determination it took her to remain at the foot of the cross and not leave her divine son alone to die. She stood through it all from the start to the end. For the bitter sorrows of her heart, the church calls her the queen of martyrs. The sixth word of sorrow. Mary receives the dead body of Jesus. John 19, 32 to 40. The friends of Jesus, Joseph and Nicodemus, they take down Jesus' body from the cross and soon afterwards, they give it to Mary in her arms for one last time. 
Then they carried to a stone, which Mary had covered with clean linen. Jesus' limbs is stiff and cold in death. Mary sees the terrifying wounds from the flogging Jesus received. His flesh had been shredded and large strips had been torn from his back. His entire body had been so lacerated that gaping wounds crisscrossed him from head to toe. Mary found that the wounds from the nails were less severe than those caused by the flocking and carrying of the cross. She was so horrified at the thought that her son had managed to carry the heavy splintered cross all the way to Calvary. I don't know how many of us have uh, been to Jerusalem, but I had been to Jerusalem and there is the cross still lying there and we need so many people to carry that cross as we were walking on the Dolores. And just imagine Jesus was made to carry this heavy cross alone. She saw the circle of blood, the crown of thorns on his forehead, and to her horror realized that many of these barb thorns had dug so deeply into his skull, they penetrated through his brain. Oh my God. As she cleaned his damaged body, she envisioned him during each stage of his life, remembering the first look of his beautiful newborn face. How he lay in the manger and every day in between till she bathed his lifeless body. And as she was washing her son, she prayed that everybody would know the riches of paradise and enter the gates of heaven. She prayed for every soul in the world to embrace God's love. Though her son's torturous death would benefit all mankind and not be in vain. But her anguish was relentless as she prepared her son for burial. But she remained brave and strong. St. John in his gospel records this incident. Blood and water flowed out of Jesus' side after soldier Longinus came up and drove a spear so forcefully into Jesus' side that it almost came out of the other side. And as soon as he drew it out, its point was all red with blood. The heart of our beloved Jesus was so violently and mercilessly pierced that the spear split his heart in two. And when Mary saw that her son's heart has been stabbed through, she felt her own heart pierced. She trembled so violently and with bitter groans. And she felt her soul pierced with a keen sword of grief. The seventh sorrow, the body of Jesus being placed in the tomb, John 19, 39 to 42. The life of our Blessed Virgin Mary was so closely linked to that of Jesus. She thought there was no reason now to live any longer without him. Her only comfort was that his death had ended this unspeakable suffering. Our sorrowful mother, with the help of John and the holy women, devoutly place the body in the sepulchre and go home with great pain and tremendous sorrow. She was dying a slow death since her son's heart stopped beating. But she also rejoiced in her soul because she knew that Jesus, our Savior, would soon be resurrected. Joseph of Arimathea a distinguished member of the Jewish Sanhedrin, secretly a disciple of Jesus, took down our Lord's body from the cross, wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid him in a new tomb out of a rock in a garden in which no one had been buried. He was assisted by an other Jewish leader called Nicodemus. And when Jesus was being placed in the Holy Sepulchre, it was just impossible for anyone to describe how sad Mama Mary would have been. How could anyone not feel that immense heartache like Mary at the scene? Her thoughts and her heart was always in the tomb of her son, Jesus. And when Jesus' body was being entombed, there were two hearts 
in one sepulcher. Mary knew she had given birth to a child who was to rise from the dead. Christ fulfilled his mission for our salvation. In his death and by his burial, he will rise again. God does not ask much of us. Instead, he asks us to give everything of us to him. Whatever our desires or our deadly sins, whatever we are attached to, let it die and lay it in the tomb with Jesus. There is no way for resurrection until we are willing to die in ourselves for our Lord. John 12, 24. Very truly, I tell you, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a wheat. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. We are all called to conversion and to comfort the Blessed Mother and rejoice. For when our Blessed Mother was given to John the Apostle, she was also given to us. And so what a Blessed Mother we have. Mama Mary, she's present in all the moments of Jesus's life, from the cross, the resurrection, the Pentecost to ascension. But look at us. We got separated ourselves from the soul of God by our sin. No matter what we have done, Jesus always opens his heart through the sacrament of penance. Come back to Jesus and let us seek him in these moments. Let us have the closing prayer. Virgin Mary, being raised to heaven, she reigns with Christ forever. Never, never be afraid of loving the Blessed Virgin too much because you can never love her more than Jesus did. Virgin Mary, the most noble queen of the world, plead for peace and salvation for she has brought forth Jesus Christ, the Savior of us all. We give you thanks, O God, for so great a mother and ask our dear Lord, as you allow these seven sorrows to pierce your mother's heart, let them pierce our hearts today so that we may console our Blessed Mother and teach us to be faithful to you, who is our Lord. Transform us, O Lord. Change us and make us images of your likeness and your goodness. Heavenly Mother, in union with Jesus, purify our suffering so we give glory to God. You truly became the Queen of all martyrs. Thank you, Jesus Christ, Savior of the world, for answering our prayers, who with the Father and the Holy Son lives and reigns for world ever and ever. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you.